Vlogmas friends, it is me, Kimberly McAlinden, and if you're new here, welcome. Today is December 20th, and I am starting to get super tired. <laughs> it's about 6 p.m., and I am just getting up here, and I'm, I, I still have a lot of wrapping to do. Do you guys have a lot of wrapping to do? I'm starting to get a little bit nervous, but I, I know I'll get it done. Um, everything is sent out that has to be sent out. So let's get into today's events. First up is Chelsea Yarns and it is snow boots. I don't have my glasses. I don't feel like walking downstairs to get my glasses because I'm so tired. Ooh, this is pretty. Ooh. So this is that pretty like minty green again with the brown. That's really pretty. Let, let me show you yesterday so you can see. Actually, I'm going to show you three days in a row. So this is 20, 19, and 18. Look at how cool those all look together. That's really cool. But this one is today's, so it, it is more blue than green. Cool. Snow boots. Right, let's put this back. I'm also starting to get a little sad that I'm almost finished with the, um, the advent uh, shawl for Suburban Stitcher, but you know what's so cool? I have Chelsea's to do, so that's wonderful. I just, I just picked it up. I just picked it up so I can get it. Ugh. Okay. Uh, next we have Victoria from Vita Lifestyle. This is called Grandma's Recipe. Well, I wonder what it's gonna be. Ooh, pretty. Ooh, look at this, Victoria. Look at. 
So it has this, the pinks and this really pretty caramel color, but then it has like blues, all these different colored speckles. Oh, so maybe it's like a frosted sugar cookie with sprinkles. Let me know what your favorite cookies are for, for Christmas. I, on Thursday, am going to make the my grandmother's sugar cookie recipe, and those are the roll-out ones, bake them, ice them. So you guys will get that recipe. And, uh, but what's your, I also love pecan balls. And my mom's friend, Mrs. Butler, she used to make bourbon balls with bourbon and um, Nilla wafers. And it was like the easiest thing, but boy, if you had like six or 10, you'd get snockered. So here is, oh, look at how pretty. Yay. That's a beautiful shot. Yay! Okay, Victoria, great. Grandmother, Grandma's cookies. All right, and next is Suburban Stitcher, Quiet Voices. The days are short, the sun is spark, hung thin between the dark and dark. John Updike. Let's just give myself a round of applause for being able to read that. <laughs> All right, day 20. <laughs> oh, so pretty. This, this is lavender. Such a beautiful color. Oh. We, I did not do this on purpose, but look at my sweater. Um, my sweater is an Isabel Kramer sweater. I can't remember for the life of me the name of it, but I do know that I used the Hedgehog Tweety. Uh, the, it's, it's a DK weight. I believe I used um, a dyer um, that doesn't dye anymore, Pandia's Jewels. Um, for the, the purple, but if I get up close, you'll be able to see all the pretty speckles in the sweater. I love this sweater, and um, it is, I do have to definitely wear, you know, something with heft underneath it because I find it very itchy. Um, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. I, I love the sweater. Um, and I am going to shut the camera off and look and see what the heck name of it is. Hang on. I'm back. Hi, it is called Cardoon by Isabel Kramer. I was a test knitter for this and I knit the fifth size, which is size 50 and a half. It fits beautifully knit in size five and six. Uh, did I do anything? No mods. No mods on Isabel Kramer. So, yes, here it is. Um, I love it. I absolutely love it. I love the way it looks. Let me show you Suburban Stitchers um, Day 19 that I finished last night. Excuse me. So here was day 19, this purple, it's a seed stitch. And then, so what happens today, which I'm kind of jazzed about, is that now we're not going, you know, it's a triangle and, and we picked up stitches all along here. And so we've been going back and forth this way. Now we're going to knit something and then join it. And then, so it's like an attached, kind of like attached lace edging, but it's not lace. It's in, I believe it's in garter stitch. So I'm really excited to do that. Uh, you need another, um, another set of needles. And then, so I'm gonna start this tonight, hopefully. I really feel like I should get all my wrapping done and then I can be like, you know. 
Um, but that starts with this. So by the end of tomorrow, I will have a whole bunch of knitting on a different on a different set of needles. And then I think the next day, then we join it in. I don't know, I'm excited. The whole construction, everything about it has just been absolutely wonderful. So here it is. And then this will be somewhere, somewhere by it. It won't be next to it like this. It's gonna be next to it like this in some capacity, I don't know. All right, so let's not get that. All right, um, I also finished a hat for my niece for her birthday. She requested a hat, no pom-pom, and she'd like to wear it to soccer practice. And so I made the, and um, her, in her team colors, which are black and red. So I made the Lotus hat and um, I timed myself. This is the first time I ever did this stitch or, you know, this hat at um at all and it took me four hours start to finish so i thought and i made it in woolies thick and quick from lion brand yarn because i figured she's going to be playing soccer in it so it will get a little sweaty so i wanted it to be able to be machine washed and dried if it got stuck she's one of four kids and so i just you know if it got thrown in the wash i didn't want it to be you know the end of the world. So I uh, I made this today. I loved it. Uh, the pattern comes for many, many sizes, many, many gauges. So not many, many, like three gauges. Um, and so I thought it was great. So the way that you do this stitch kind of looks like you're doing one round of only of a color, right? So there's no, it's no, it's only one round per color. So I, I pulled the color up as I was working and it kind of turned out like double knitted, you know, like, like a, um, like a yoke sweater because of the, of the stitch. Isn't that cool? So I think the inside looks just as pretty as the, as the outside. So that's, inside out and then this is that pretty lotus flower so I mean I've seen there it's been made thousands of times and um, and the pattern in my it's it's well written there are tutorials video tutorials picture photo tutorials um, using large needles and thick wool hurt it it make it hurts my hands these days and so i i not these days like probably for a long time it's been doing that so it's not really my favorite to do but to get a gift done in four hours might be something that you might be interested in in these final days you know before christmas i will also say um that it is a paid for pattern and in, in my opinion, it was expensive. It was $9.50 for a hat pattern. Um, but I paid it. Question that I get a lot about hat making is when you're knitting in the round, how, uh, how to join your stitches in the round so that, they, so that they look symmetrical, you know? Because when you're knitting in the round, you're knitting it's a, it's a sphere. It's not, it's, it's, it's like, um, you know, like a spiral staircase. It's not exactly flat. And that shows up specifically when you're doing stripes, right? So, um, so when you are joining the bottom of your hat, uh, how I do that so that I keep everything in order. So guess what? tip time so i'm gonna uh, set my other camera up and we're gonna go ahead and do not only how i join things in the round to keep going uh, but i'm also going to talk about ribbing and how i get now this is a one by one rib meaning that there's a knit stitch and then there's a purl stitch but how i get my two by two ribbing no this is one by one too as well, I mean, uh, when you get two by two ribbing, how sometimes there's that one stitch that's a little bit bigger, 
on the knit side, and so I'm going to explain that. So I'm going to set my other camera up, and I'll be right back. All right, so here we have, uh, I'm starting another one, and um, I have done the long tail cast on. It's a little too, here we go. I've done the long tail cast on, and one thing that I notice in the patterns, it says to, you know, make sure that your stitches aren't twisted. So what I like to do is on this inside right here, you can see there's that little braid. On the outside, on the, uh, on the other side, there's kind of, you know, that pearl bump right here. But on the side that I like showing, it's like this pretty braid right here. So what I do is I make sure that the braid is on the inside. So I simply just, you know, I make it so that the braid is all on the inside so that I know that I'm not gonna have a problem with, um, with twisting. Okay, so what I do is I put my marker in, right? And then with this first stitch here, now this pattern, for this pattern, um, you're gonna, you're going to go, um, you're going to do a twisted, um, what's that called? A twisted stitch, knit through the back loop. What I do is I hold both of these yarns together and I knit the first stitch with both yarns together. And what that does is it creates a nice snug um, spot between the last cast on stitch and your first knitted stitch. Do you see how nice and snug that is? Let's see what it would look like if I simply knit it. If I knit it with my working yarn and I knit it through the back, loop because that's what the pattern is telling us to do and I knit it through the back loop all right I'm even gonna like pull it snug do you see how there's this there's this big space in between here and it just is the nature of the beat even if I pull this super tight there's still that space in between here so what I like to do I'm gonna get everything situated. All right, so I'm going to make sure that my pretty braid is on the inside of the work, like that. And I'm going to take the working end of the yarn and the tail I have to go into the back of the stitch and I'm going to knit those together. So it kind of gives it like a little bit, now look, see, there's no space. And there's no space because there are two stitches. You know, there's there's two lengths of yarn here. So it just it just closes it up very nicely. You don't get that space in between here. Now, if it were a two by two rib, I would do it again but it isn't. We're doing a knit one, purl one rib. So now I'm going to let go of uh, the my tail, which happens to be a little too long, but that's okay. Now I'm going to do my purl stitch. So here's where I wanted to talk about purling. If I were to purl, now I'm a thrower, the, the usual way, right? I would come up and over the stitch and then um, there would be my purl. I would bring this to the back and then I would knit into the back stitch. So what happens is there's a there's that big space again. And the reason for that is when you are coming up and over, when you're working a purl stitch and you're coming up and over, whether you're doing it as a thrower or whether you're doing it as a continental knitter, you're always going to use a little bit more yarn on your purl. So the, wor the workaround for that, what I do, 
that keep, that uses the same amount of yarn for each stitch. So each stitch is going to look exactly the same. So each stitch here is going to use the same amount of yarn, right? Is, instead of coming up and over on my purl stitch, I'm going to purl, I'm gonna come underneath and purl it like that. Now look, there isn't that much of a difference. Now I'm gonna come back around and I'm gonna work the pattern. So I'm going to knit through the back loop and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna come up and under that stitch. Now, what that does is use less, it uses less yarn, but it also creates a, your, when you come back around, uh, the stitch is going to be twisted. Not, not totally twisted. It's going to be left leg seated on your, on your needle. And so when you're working the purl stitch again, you're going to have to you're going to have to go into it a little bit differently. So, I'm going to work my way around and I'm going to come back and I'll show you the way that I'm going to knit the purls or I'm going to actually purl the purl stitch, but I'm going to show you actually how I do that. Okay friends, I've come around and I have knit my first round. Now I'm going to slip my marker and this is the first knit stitch. Now we have to remember that we have to knit this stitch. Um, we have to knit both of these, uh, both of these um, on the needle. So, um, and just, I know that the first round was knit through the back loop, but the next round is not. So. Um, so now we're just going to knit one, but we're making sure that we knit both of those stitches together. That also kind of anchors your yarn in and it's, and you know, you don't have much work to do to seam it in. Now, if I were to go into this stitch, the way it's situated on the needle, it is sitting with the left leg of the stitch facing forward. So, and usually the stitch is right leg first, okay? So what you're going to have to do to keep this tight, to continue to work the way that we're working, is you're gonna come through the back here and then again, knit it like that. So we're going to knit, bring our yarn forward and come up, back and through and then work that. So knit one, bring the yarn forward, come up and through. Instead of coming down, up and over, or even under, that would twist the stitch. We're gonna come up and through the back. And that, my friends, is how my ribbing looks really, really nice. So these stitches are just as tight as these stitches. If I were to, if I were to do my purl stitch the other way, it uses more yarn, therefore this part of this knit stitch is going to be bigger than this side and um, it just it looks a little bit sloppier instead of super tight and nice and neat. I hope you enjoyed that tip. If you have any questions please put it down in the description uh, um, in the comments. So what you think? Have you been doing your ribbing that way? Did you realize that sometimes you use more stitch, more yarn on one on your purl stitches than on your knit stitches? And that's why sometimes your knit stitches look wonky? Let me know. Let me know if that's a tip that helped you. I hope you enjoyed today's vlog and I will see you tomorrow. If you have not subscribed yet, the subscribe button is right there. And if you'd like to see other tips, other recipes, my family, stories about growing up, 
and you haven't seen the other vlogs in this series, the playlist is right over there. Thanks so much and I'll see you tomorrow.